Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a step-by-step -step guide of how to draw this portrait. So this is my reference photo. I've drawn her a few times already, so in the end of the video, I'll share with you what the other sketches look like. Um, but the reason I like drawing her is because it's she's her face is very symmetrical. Um, she's got kind of like a... A really subtle smile on her face and a really a really cool looking gaze on her face and she's beautiful she's a beautiful model so why not so right off the back the first thing I do is because the paper I'm using is square one of the things I like to do is just to figure out like what you know how large we want to draw it and then the other thing is identify what direction the face is at. So I mentioned before, she is basically looking straight at you. This gaze is looking directly back at you, kind of as if this is a mirror, right? So then the position of her face is pretty much straight on, right? So this, this line is pretty much straight and also pretty much straight coming down, right? So once you, you know, observe these few points, I would say it's time to start drawing. So the first things I would do is just plop down kind of the general the general boundaries, right? So step one is general boundaries. So don't, you know, don't think too long and hard about this step. It should be just whatever you see. This is the line here. And it's, you know, where her eyes are, it's basically halfway, right? Between here to here and here to here. It's basically, you know, just basically halfway. So if we draw a line here, that's basically halfway, roughly. So we know where our eyes are. So I don't usually draw, you know, this much support lines when I'm actually just looking and drawing, but because we're doing a tutorial, so I want you to know like what went through my head, right? So when what went through my head is a kind of figured a rough boundary and then I kind of figure out where to position these these things and one of the things I really like to do when I'm drawing the face is just to figure out where the eyeballs are gonna be like the especially if it's a gaze I want to know where these two dots are and for the nose I want to know where these two dots are these are important positioning places to put down on paper as soon as you kind of figure it out because then you can look at everything else just evolves around those points. So for the mouth, the two points that I like to make sure I capture correctly are these two points, right? And once you have those points, then you can start looking at, okay, what is, what is it that I'm really trying to capture, right? What what is the shape of her eye? Her the shape of her eye is kind of a little bit droopy, right? She kind of has that puppy eye look almost, because um, her it's not an almond shape because almond shape you know kind of goes up like that. Which is a lot of Asians have that kind of eye. Her eyes, you know, it's interesting. It's going downwards, right? So if you elongate these two lines, it's going very much downwards which makes her eyes. Really beautiful and also really unique. So again, I mentioned, you know, I, you need to know where the center of the eye is. And notice how like I like to go back and forth between the two eyes because her eyes or her face rather is rather symmetrical, right? 
um, a lot of people's face are not like that. A lot of people's face, the left hand side and the right hand side, they're actually very different. Her eyes are quite symmetrical. The only difference is that this side is a little bit um, high, uh, higher, right? There's a slight tilt on this eyebrow uh, versus this side. And the slight tilt actually is noticeable even in her eyes, right? Because this eyelid is slightly thicker compared to this this eye. But besides that, her eyes, her facial, um, the left side and the right hand side, if you don't look at the eyes, it's like really symmetrical. The left hand side and the right hand side, pretty much identical. So it's actually, um, I think, up to the artist whether you want to capture that or not. Like, do you want to do you want to capture how symmetrical her face is? Because you don't, you don't have to capture that, right? Uh, in fact, I think this kind of subtle difference, most of the time I, I overlook. I don't actually try to uh, draw it the way it is. Um, also, every portrait sketch, you don't have to draw it exactly like um, the model, the reference photo either, because you know, maybe you want to add your own personality into their sketch and capturing a likeness is not your priority. I would say most of the time it's not for me at least. Um, I I quite like to, to capture the, the facial expression. So for her, she's got this um, puppy eye look and the gaze kind of pulls you in. That's what I wanted to capture. You know, but because this is a tutorial, I'll probably try to capture the likeness to a certain degree as well. So as soon as I capture, I think, enough detail, I like to move on. Like I don't like to stay in one area for too long. Um, I very much um, prefer to capture the completeness before I capture the details, okay? So the completeness goes first and then details, okay? So, you know, I've, I've, I feel like I spent enough time capturing the details on the around the eyes. I'm going to move on to the nose. And the reason I do this is because I want the whole sketch to feel like it's one single sketch and not like in pieces. These habits also um, just becomes part of your drawing style, I would say. Um, there's a lot of people who do focus on one area at a time. And that becomes their drawing style. Like that becomes their drawing. A lot of times I see people, um, you know, wondering about like, what is our style? I don't have, I don't have my art style, blah, blah, blah. But to be honest, I think your art style is just a combination of all your habits. Even if you follow someone's tutorial, um, your drawing still is your own drawing. You know what I mean? It just becomes who you are. So now that we got like the facial, uh, the features, right? The, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Um, now what I do is I, I go back in and I kind of, I make adjustments, right? Based on the, because I mentioned like, let's capture her likeness, right? So one of the things I notice is my guides in the very beginning, not 100% correct, right? So we're gonna go back in and correct it. So for the jaw, um, what you want to watch out for is where the curvature is, right? So that's an um, anchor point, that's an anchor point, that's an anchor point, that's an anchor point. So where the slope kind of turns is what I like to focus on. 
Um, and the other thing I like to focus on is definitely like the um, where the connections are, right? And then you can look at the connection in association with what's already been drawn, right? So this dot has already been drawn. drawn. So you look at, you know, how they intersect. Like if I draw a line from this to here, like, and then you look at where you have drawn yours. And you know, you just look at the negative shape, right? When you're trying to draw this, this section. So again, like it's much easier to draw shape rather than lines, for me at least, right? So, you know, going back to drawing shape, there's a very interesting shape right here, right? That's the shadow. So, if you want to make sure that's really pronounced, you could draw this shape on her face, you know? And then you'll see, oh, what am I missing? Right? I'm missing a year right here because this negative space, you know, that's all shadow. That's what I'm focusing on drawing right now. And you can see this, there's a triangle right here. And once you draw the triangle, you can, you can see, okay, am I, this is a bit off, you see, in this drawing right here. But other than that, this is about right. And then move into here right another shape is right that's there's a really interesting shape on her eye which we didn't have before so adding that in you could decide for yourself you know whether you want to exaggerate that um the fact that this side is slightly bigger compared to this side. Like, do you want to exaggerate that a little bit? Um, I sometimes tend to do that. I tend to exaggerate the size of the eyes. I don't know if that's just because I used to like to draw a lot of manga characters and <laughs> residual effect. <laughs> The other thing I like to do is, um, I mean, depending on how I feel, like my, what my mood is, I will also add kind of um, something that I feel like not a lot of people would notice into my drawing. So sometimes it's not even things that I think um, make the person like really increases the likeness of the person sometimes it's just something really silly so in this one one of the things I I don't know if you, know, you noticed this or not but her her upper so okay usually I think for a lot of people um, the bottom of your lip is much thicker and fatter <laughs> compared to the upper lip. For her, it's not really, like, I wouldn't say it's the opposite, but she does have a rather thick upper lip. That's, um, again, not unusual, but out of all the people I've drawn, um, this is a really interesting character. So one of the things I might do is just to make sure that's really pronounced. And emphasis that you know this line rather than this blurry line because her bottom lip um, there's a blurrier line here 
But if you add a little bit more emphasis here, then that's going really going to show through the fact that um, she has a rather thick upper lip. I mean, you don't have to, but I that's something that I I I like to do. I notice something that I find a bit unusual about the model, and I like to capture that in the sketch. Um, because to me, that's kind of what makes your drawing yours, you know? Because a lot of people are going to draw the same thing, right? And how, how can you tell it's yours? Um, when I was in art school, by the end of the class, like we all draw the same thing, and by the end of the class, we would put everyone's drawing at the at the front of the classroom and we would do art critique. Um, and one of the things I always want to make sure is like, I can immediately tell which one's mine. So again, another thing I like to do is you, you look at where this vanishes, right? If you draw a line across, so that should match. Like right off the bat, I feel like the the first line I drawn was a little bit too high up, okay? So you just kind of make a mental model. And the other thing I like to do is um, pull it through like different angles and just look at it. Because what drawing really is, is it's a training for your eyes. It's to train your eyes so that you notice things that other people don't, right? Yes, it's also like training your hand and whatnot, but I feel like it's mostly training your the muscles in your eye. Okay, and once it's at this stage, you could start shading it. Because you pretty much got the boundaries, the rough shapes, the, the big important shapes um, done. So now it's like the fun part. You add details, you add shading, you look at what it, where is the darkest area that I want to capture. And just have fun with it. Uh, one of the ways that you could add um, at the pop to your to your drawing is to create contrast. Okay, so contrast is not necessarily created by using a highlighter. Um, sometimes contrast is created by having a sharp uh, difference between two values. Right. So, for example. This eye right now pops up a lot more than this eye. Why? Well, it's because there's a much higher contrast created in, in this eye compared to this one. And I draw it quite differently as well. But if I want to close the gap, I could make them more similar. There aren't a lot of shading on her face. So could like just leave it like that. The lead that I'm using is extremely soft. Uh, it's very buttery. So I'm almost using it as if it's like like I'm not trying to create a lot of uh, strokes or anything like that. I'm just shading it in. That's a very um, clear cut contrast. Um, so you gotta make sure that it's, you know, you're cleaning that area up. I remember what I mentioned before about the mouth. We can also make that high contrast. By just erasing all the blurred lines to create a cleaner line. See? 
that upper lip. To add interest, I have decided to add more details on this side of the face rather than the left hand side. So what that does is um, when people look at the drawing, they're gonna they're not gonna immediately notice what it is, but their eyes will draw towards this side of the face. And it's up to you how far you want to push that. There are details that you can omit if you think it's too distracting. I often omit details on sketches because I don't think they're that important. to the final drawing, so I will not include them. By tilting your, um, your pen like this and holding it back, you can make really light lines. Clean up some lines with your eraser. Smudge lines that are a little bit too harsh. Okay, I'm done. And now I will share with you the previous drawing I did. Ta-da! Think I improved? I think so. This is a much better drawing compared to this one. I also used the same lid. Which is from this. I've also done two brush pen drawings with, yeah, so for this model, I also drew this one. This is the first brush pen attempt at drawing this reference photo. And this is the second second attempt. I also think the second attempt was much better than the first one. Okay. There's no reason why you shouldn't use the same reference photo and draw multiple times. Uh, even if even if you don't really like the initial drawing, that doesn't mean the second one is not going to be something that you really really like.